Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone is having a great day. This is Brother David. I want to bring out a beautiful scripture. We're in Psalm 47, verse 6, which says, Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. The sing praises here is repeated four times to show how passionately desirous the psalmist was that God might have his due praise and glory. And he's showing what great necessity and importance it is for us to perform this praise to our king. Because he is not only Israel's king, but God is the king of all the nations of the world. So he highly deserves all our praise. It is not just singing a song at church. We are talking about a sincere praise from your heart. For all that the Lord has done for you. Praise is a duty we should do frequently, not just at church. So when we praise God, we do it with understanding. Understanding why we are praising the Lord. God's role as king extends to all aspects of creation. He created all things. He just merely spoke and everything came into existence. And this same God knows when the sparrows fall. And God has promised to meet each and every one of our needs. Our God is all-powerful, all-knowing. He never changes. He is faithful in love, mercy, and grace. And he continues unchanging forever, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is always right there with us, right beside us. He will never leave us or forsake us. He deserves to be praised forever. As king, he has the right to rule the whole world and everything in it. His kingdom is universal. And someday, it will be an earthly kingdom that will be ruled by the Messiah, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this kingdom will be marked with peace, justice, and righteousness. All praise is due to his holy name. You see the repetition of the phrase sing praises denotes frequency and great devotion in the performance of the service of praising our king. This type of song is a song of adoration and this is not to be just sung one time. This is to be sung over and over. That's why it uses sing praises four times. It's telling you to continue this process. Don't just praise him at church. Praise him throughout the week. The repetition sing praises shows that the heart was full and is overflowing with joy. It is a call on all to celebrate the praises of God. Praises to our King who left heaven and became a flesh and blood human, fully 100% God and 100% man, lived a perfect sinless life, gave us the pattern of how to live our lives. Then dying a brutal death, experiencing unimaginable pain, being to the point that he was unrecognizable as a person, being chained up, laughed at, slapped, punched, spit on, mocked, had the hairs of his beard plucked out. Then died a suffocating death on the cross, where his hands and feet were nailed to the cross, to the wood. And to get a breath, he would have to use his feet, grinding his foot bone against that nail just to get his body up high enough to expand his lungs. And this is all while raking his previously mangled back against that rough cross because he suffered a torturous whipping. And from the whip, they were separated at the ends into several leather pieces, which had tied to them pieces of glass, rock, bone, metal, whatever it may be. Just picture in your mind taking your fork. And you're wrecking it against the chicken. That's probably a pretty good example of what Jesus' back had looked like. And he was raking that torn up back against a rough wooden cross. Reopening those wounds over and over. Then he died and he was in a tomb for three days and three nights. And then he came back to life. And then 40 days after he rose from the dead, his resurrection, he ascended back up to heaven where he is now interceding for us. And he is testifying that we are his. And he did all that for us, for me and for you listening right now. And that alone is a reason to sing praises to our king forever. 
But Jesus didn't just stop there. Every day the Lord does something for us. Like I said, he's always right there beside us. He's helping us when we're going through ups and downs in life. He's always right there with us, holding our hand, leading us out. So if you've already called on the name of the Lord, and now you're his, and you've accepted what Jesus has done for you, then never let the praise be paused. Never cease to be glad. Never cease to be grateful. Let Jesus have all of our praise, not just part of it at church. Jesus deserves it all, and Jesus shall have it all. See, this is such a beautiful scripture for us who have called on the name of the Lord, who have accepted what he's done for us. But if you haven't accepted Jesus, and I believe you're here for a reason, and if you got in this point in the video, just keep listening because you may not actually know who Jesus is. You may know what he's on the cross. But you never take the time to talk to him, to pray to him, to read the Bible, to get to know him. So I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. Because we who have called on the name of the Lord, we have reason to praise. Because the Lord every day is doing something for us. And when we come to the realization of that God led us through this, then we got reason to praise him. But if you don't have him, then you don't have a reason to praise. You don't understand why we praise him. Because we have received the love of God, the mercy of God. We've been redeemed by the Lord. We received his grace. But you don't understand this. So I want to show you what that means. So the gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall, from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. And sin creates the wall that separates all of us from God. Because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because of our sin, the wages of sin is death. Which means because of our sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There's a punishment for our sin. And because we sin, we deserve this punishment and we are all destined for destruction. But the mercy of God is that God loves us so much. That God the Son Jesus left heaven, became a flesh and blood human, fully God, fully man. Lived a perfect sinless life and on the cross Jesus became sin for us to pay our sins. Meaning when Jesus was on the cross, he put our sins on himself. Jesus took the punishment for our sins, the punishment that we deserve, Jesus took in our place. And when we believe the gospel message and are saved, then we are redeemed. Our, our ransom has been paid from the debt of sin. And we are saved. And then we put on Jesus' righteousness because we beforehand are like a garment stained with sin. But when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then we are washed clean with Jesus' precious blood, which washes us white as snow. And now when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sin. Now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. And if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart, not just intellectually knowing in your mind, but, but believing in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you'll be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. There are not multiple ways. No one else can save you. No preacher can save you. Your mom and dad can't save you. You can't earn it. Your works, your deeds can't save you. Salvation cannot be found anywhere else and in anyone else. Salvation can only be obtained by Jesus Christ. Because Jesus' blood is our ticket. On the cross, Jesus paid that price for our sins, took our punishment. Jesus' blood bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. And Jesus' blood broke down that wall that separates us from God. So if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, meaning you're not just saying words, you're not looking to please someone who's maybe told you to go to the altar, but, or you're not looking for a get-out-of-hell-free card because someone scared you about hell but you really believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross and you truly want to live for him now, then you'll be saved. This is Jesus' free gift. And all you have to do is accept it. Because the grace of God is that we, we cannot earn our way to heaven. We cannot be a good enough person. We cannot do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it will not matter how much you've given to charity or that you think that you've been good enough, that you're a good person, that you never robbed or killed anybody. Because our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace through faith that we are saved. It's not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Meaning we cannot earn our way to heaven. 
We don't even deserve to go to heaven, but God loves us so much that he made a way. And we always follow the gospel, the warning of Jesus is in return, because right now you can personally know who Jesus is. But one day soon and how soon we don't know, but complete hell on earth will come. We can see it coming. The world is getting darker by the minute. The Bible predicts that the shadow of the tribulation is so big right now. We can barely see light around it. And one day soon, the restrainer who is holding all hell back will be removed. And then the tribulation will begin. And it will be a time of terrifying supernatural events. Scarier than any movie you've ever seen or nightmare you ever had. Each day will get progressively worse. It will be literal hell on earth. And it is coming. Bible prophecy is jumping off the page. And I want you to know Jesus personally before all hell breaks loose. Because right now before the tribulation starts, we're under the age of grace. Which means right now is the easy way out. To come to Jesus, all you have to do is believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross and turn your life to him. Just have that sincere belief in who he is and what he did. Accept Jesus' free gift, that free ticket into heaven. But after the tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over. And it will be the hard way, and you have to do more than just believe in Jesus. You will have to die for Jesus. But I love you, and I don't want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today. Because one thing is for sure, the Bible is clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. We are not guaranteed our next breath. And even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, who knows how long we'll be able to survive. But the point is, is that the end is here. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now, do not put Jesus off any longer. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. So if you'd like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of salvation and a sample prayer. But these are just templates, an outline of what to say to be saved. It is not a repeat after me. There are no magic words to be saved. In fact, these words are not even important. But if you want to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer, a sincere cry out from your heart that you can't do this on your own, that you need a Savior. Well, I pray you got something out of this, but never take my word for it. Because no one on this earth has the answers. Whether it's the most famous preacher or the smartest person in the world, they don't have the answers. Only God has the answers, and you only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself, just picking random verses or listen to someone read or preach for a few minutes. You won't get the full picture. They won't even scratch the surface of what's in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. And the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, or struggle that you may be going through right now. In the description box, we have several sources to read the Bible. And if you need prayer today, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement with you and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We'd love to praise Jesus right along with you for what he's doing in your life. Well, I pray you guys another video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries or we'll see you in the clouds.